Okay. So now we're going to take a look at um, some examples of using the quadratic formula. You will definitely learn more strategies uh, next year. There are easier ways about this when you take some time to just practice the algebra for a while. Um, we don't really have time for that uh, in this geometry course, so we're going to just learn the bare bones of the quadratic formula, which can always be used. It isn't always the quickest, most efficient way, but it's the way that always works uh, in this situation where you have an x squared, uh, x squared and an x all in the same equation. Uh, how do we get the x by itself? All right, so I have a couple uh, easy examples to start, and then they get a little bit more complicated as I go through, and then a couple of shortcuts in the middle, and then uh, one with just not the prettiest numbers. Um, okay, so the first things first, uh, A, B, and C values. If a number is not in front of a variable, you can assume the number is 1. So the a is the coefficient for the x squared term. The b is the coefficient for the x term. That negative is part of it. Uh, negative is attached to the 5. And then the c is the constant, the term, uh, with no variable. And then we have to have the situation where everything is on the left side and just a 0 on the right side, or it doesn't matter, right or left, but uh, all the non-zero terms on one side of the equal sign and the zero on the other term. So the a is the coefficient for the x squared, the b is the coefficient for the x, and the c is the constant or no coefficient. All right, so we're just going to substitute these guys into the formula. So we have uh, x equals negative so this negative comes from the formula. The b value I'm substituting in is negative. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Make that square root a little bit longer. Include everything all over 2a. So all I've done is substitute in my b values in these two places from the formula. My a value, the 1 in these two places, just like in the formula, and my c value, uh, right where the formula says it belongs. Get a little closer in here on this. Uh, and now we simplify. Uh, I did put these negative numbers here in parentheses uh, on purpose. Uh, it's important to not confuse a negative from the formula with the negative value that you substitute into the formula. Also, uh, when you square a negative, it becomes positive. So a lot of these parentheses are going to go away in the next step, but you may want to put yourself, make yourself uh, put the numbers in parentheses in the first place uh, to avoid making any sign errors. So negative times negative 5 is positive 5, plus or minus the square root. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Uh, 4 times 1 times 6 times negative is negative 24. And this is all over 2 times 1 is 2. Now, I did start off with an easy example because check this out. 25 minus 24. That's just 1. So what do we have here? 5 plus or minus the square root of 1 all over 2. So at this time, uh, it breaks now into two equations. We have the x equals 5 plus 1 over 2. We also have the x equals 5 minus 1 over 2 uh, because of the plus or minus. So there are actually two answers. Uh, the plus minus, I forgot to bring this up before, uh, is going to actually imply that sometimes we get two answers. Not every single time, but often we get two answers. Uh, a time that you would not get two answers if b squared minus 4ac equals 0, then 
plus zero minus zero gives you the same thing and we would only have one answer there. Uh, the other time, and I don't think you're going to see any problems uh, this year, but maybe next year, if uh, b squared minus 4ac is a negative number, then we have a negative under a square root, and there's all kinds of issues there. Uh, you're not going to encounter that in the geometry problems this year, but uh, it is something to look out for next year. Anyways, 5 plus 1 is 6 divided by uh, 2 is 3, so we get 2 x answers here, x equals 3, and 5 minus 1 is 4 over 2 is 2. So x equals 2 or 3. Uh, we have two possible answers for this problem. Uh, and that's going to happen sometimes. Sometimes we're going to have two answers, sometimes not so much depending on the situation, but be prepared to get at least two answers uh, when you write an equation based on the theorems we're going to see in the circle chapter, sometimes you're going to end up with a x squared and a x in the same equation. Uh, and this is, in general, how you're going to solve for it. All right, let's take a look at this other example. In the second example here, I have a 4 on the other side of the equal sign. And remember, to use the quadratic formula, we need every non zero term on one side of the equal sign and just plain old zero on the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract four from each side to get that zero on the right hand side of the equal sign, which I'd like. Okay, and now uh, we have a, my coefficient for the x squared term is two, b, my coefficient for the x is negative seven, and c, my constant, no variable is negative four. Okay, uh, and now we use the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, uh, cleaning this, oh, I'm sorry, couldn't see some of that. Uh, cleaning this up, uh, negative times negative is positive, so we get x equals positive 7, plus or minus negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. All right, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, negative 8 times negative 4 is positive 32 and that's all over 4. All right, let's continue along. So x equals 7 plus or minus now uh, 49 plus 32. Oh wait, how convenient is that? That's going to just be 81, isn't it? Well, that's nice. So now when we take the square root of 81, which is 9, we have to deal with this plus minus, break it into 2. So x is going to equal 7 plus 9 over 4 and 7 minus 9 over 4. So our two final answers here, uh, 7 plus 9 is 16, 16 divided by 4 is 4, and then with minus, 7 minus 9 is negative 2, negative 2 over 4 is negative 1 half. Now if the x value ends up equaling an entire side length, uh, we'll probably just get rid of the negatives because if a side length is positive, distance is always positive. Uh, but if it's part of an algebra expression like, um, I don't know, three, uh, 4x plus 10, uh, it's okay to actually have this negative. 4 times this negative 1 half as my x value. Um, and then when I add 10 to it, it's still going to be a positive value. So don't just automatically discard a negative x value. Take a look at the algebra expressions. 
Uh, substituting a negative could still give you a positive distance anyways. Um, so sometimes we get two answers here. In fact, oftentimes we get two answers here. All right, uh, this time, we're going to start going a little quicker now. Uh, this time we have the 8x um, on one side of the equation by itself. So we're just going to subtract 8x from both sides to get that 0 on one side. Okay, now uh, my a value is 1. Again, a 1 is to be understood if no coefficient is there. My b value is negative 8, and c is positive 9. And we get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a c all over 2a. Okay, let's clean this one up a little bit. x equals negative times negative 8 is positive 8, plus or minus the square root of negative 8 times negative 8 is 64, minus uh, 4 times 9 times 1 is 36, all over 2 times 1 is 2. And now uh, 64 minus 36, is that uh, 28? Um, double check my arithmetic there. Yeah, 28. Okay. Um, now, as we all know, do a little off to the side here. Uh, root 28 is really root 4 times root 7. So that's really 2 root 7. Uh, so we might have a radical here x equals 8 plus or minus 2 root 7 all over 2. And now check this out. The 2 factors out of everything. The 2 factors out of the denominator, uh, the 2 factors out of 2 root 7, and the 2 factors out of the 8. So it's okay if we have a radical here. x equals 4 plus or minus square root 7. So those are the two answers, 4 plus root 7, 4 minus root 7. Uh, both of those are positive numbers. Uh, the square root of 7 is definitely less than 3. So 4 plus a little less than 3 is a little less than 7, and 4 minus less than 3 is still greater than 1. So both of those are positive values. All right, uh, real quick on the last ones, we've got a few shortcuts here. Um, okay, so this totally works. Uh, you can use a equals 4, b equals 0, c equals negative 36. Um, and the quadratic formula works if there's no b value, but there's a, totally a shortcut. Uh, if there's no b value, we don't have to be so fancy. We can get x by itself without that fancy schmancy uh, quadratic formula. We'll just add 36 to both sides. And then remember socks, shoes, shoe socks. It definitely is a little easier to get rid of the 4 first by dividing both sides by 4. x squared equals 9 and then square root both sides. x equals plus minus 3. Again, there are two answers here. Negative 3 is possible, and depending on what the problem looks like, if uh, the x value is not an entire side length and it's part of an expression, even substituting the negative 3 in there, that side length could be a positive number, and it could be a valuable answer. If x is the entire side length itself, in that case, we can disregard the negative 3 because distance is always positive. All right, last two, super quick now. Uh, this one has no c value. If you're missing a b or c value, you can do shortcuts. Uh, for example, add 3x to both sides.
and um, actually I don't want to necessarily do that. Uh, it sort of works for one answer, but not for two, and we might get two answers. So I'm going to show you uh, actually a slightly better way. Uh, factor the x out of both sides. Not both sides, both terms. Um, and this way is actually quicker. So you're multiplying two things together and the product is zero. So there are two answers. If x minus 3 equals zero, then the product of these two things uh, together equals zero. And also if x itself is equal to zero. If I multiply these two guys together, then I could get zero. So I do have two answers here. Um, And the way I was about to show you, which was actually a little sloppy on my part, um, you technically would be dividing by an x there. And if x is 0, then dividing by 0 doesn't work out so great. You'd still actually get this 3 fifths. Uh, but you'd probably miss the possibility that x equals 0. And again, uh, if x is the whole side length, then that is a trick that we can do because then x is not 0. But if x is just part of the expression and there's other things added or subtracting, x equals 0 is actually a possibility. And look at the time. I have to blast through this last example. Um, pause the video and rewatch any part of it or email me if you have any questions. I'm kind of hitting a lot of examples here, and not even so many of these are going to be represented in the geometry problems we're going to take a look at. But all right, so oops, let's add 7 to both sides. My a value is 3, b value is negative 10, c value is 7, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And simplify it down. Negative times negative 10 is positive 10, plus or minus the square root of 100 minus, let's see here now, uh, 21 times 8, 81. No, 84, silly me. Uh, all over 6. And then uh, 100 minus 84 is obviously 16. That's a nice uh, whole number. That's 4. So we'll break into 2 now. 10 plus 4 over 6 and 10 minus 4 over 6 and that gives us uh, 14 sixths is uh, 7 thirds and 6 sixths is 1 so we got x equals 1 and 7 thirds alright there's a lot of quadratic formula examples